morning, guys. How are you? First session, NAMP 2020, the initial breakout idea center session. So we're going to try to kick this off. So you guys have an amazing NAMM show coming up. I also only have 30 minutes for this section. Session actually less. They want me to be off stage five minutes early in preparation for the next speaker. So I'm going to talk really fast. I might actually blow through a couple of slides and ignore them if that's okay with you. What I'd like to do is make sure that we save time for any questions at the end. Also stick around for a few moments afterwards if you have questions. Um, but if you can't get to me right then and there and you start thinking about something I said this weekend over the course of the NAMM show and beyond, I would encourage you to get in touch with me if you don't ask me questions right away. Email address is absolutely best way to get a hold of me, but I am on the socials at, at Frank Colo while the cool kids hang out. So feel free to hit me up. We'd love to connect with you afterwards. I want to acknowledge you folks for showing up today. It's early. You probably have businesses that you're supposed to be tending to and running. It takes a lot of effort to actually get out of the office, get out of your stores, get out of your businesses, and sit here and actually invest in yourselves. So I just want to acknowledge you folks. I'm the one up here on stage with the fancy mic and, and whatnot, but you folks are the ones that deserve the credit because you're taking time to improve your businesses. So I want to acknowledge you for that. My agenda for today, what I'd like to cover is three things in particular. I want to talk about the seven biggest mistakes when it comes to digital marketing. I want to talk about seven remedies for those mistakes. And then I'm going to give you guys a blueprint, some sort of tool that will help you take action on the things that we're going to talk about today. And if I could do that in 25 minutes, would that be a success for you guys? Yeah? Yeah? Cool. Let's get started. I promise not to be this guy, though, today. Right? I think we've seen a lot of this on the internet today. You know, the guy sitting in front of his Lambo talking about like he's got all this killer online marketing success, when in reality what he's doing is making a lot of money, teaching you how to make a lot of money, teaching other people how to make a lot of money, right? So I promise not to be that guy. In fact, everything I preach is about roll up your sleeves, hard work, long-term fundamentals. I do not promise anything related to overnight results. It is not my game. If you've ever heard me speak, I'm all about strategy, I'm all about positioning, I'm all about you finding your voice with your audience. If you happen to be in the Carlsbad area of San Diego, hit me up. We'd love for you guys to come by and have a chat. You know, I got my start in internet marketing. In fact, back then they didn't even call it internet marketing. <clears throat> it was just this thing called the World Wide Web. And I got my start back in 1997, which in the internet ages is like a long freaking time ago. That makes me kind of really old when it comes to this stuff. In fact, back then, what you would do is you would go to this store called Fry's Electronics, and you would buy this book called the Internet Yellow Pages. And it was this thick. And when you wanted to like figure out what website you wanted to go visit, you would crack open this book and you would find websites. And back then, if you remember, you would just visit websites just because it was fun, right? Like what new website can I look at? And someone talking about potted plants, someone talking about, you know, whatever. And so you would buy this book here. So back then, like that was a long time ago and things were really easy back then on the internet. Like if you wanted to be successful on the internet back then, it was pretty easy. You would copy someone else's web page that was ranking well. You would use a search engine like AltaVista or InfoSeek or Ask Jeeves. Anyone remember that? I am dirt old when it comes to this stuff. I may not look it, but I'm really old when it comes to the internet. And so back then it was super easy, right, to get success. And things were like would chug along and you would see your charts going up and up and up and everything was just, conversions were great, it was easy to get success. But at some point that started to change. And at some point those same tactics, those same things that you would do, the, the tricks and the clicks and the ticks just stopped working. And so it had me and everyone in my industry running around like this, like where are the leads, where are the opportunities, where are the customers? And we were all just kind of searching and running around, chasing tactic after tactic. And so these were the kinds of questions we started to ask. And these are the kinds of things that were happening. Cost per visit was up, cost per lead is up, cost of customer acquisition, conversion rates were down, and the market differentiation, absolutely gone. So I don't know if you folks experienced this in your businesses. My guess is yes, but you can truly answer this. How many people feel like your, your marketplaces are saturated today? How many people feel like you're just drowning in a sea of noise that there's just competitor after competitor and you just don't know how to stand out. So this is what ultimately I, I determined was the ultimate problem when it comes to digital marketing, online marketing, having a website, trying to engage people. And by the way, this isn't slowing down anytime soon. 
I promise you tomorrow and the day after, more and more competitors are going to enter your space. So I really set out to figure out, how do we counteract this? How do we like come at this strategically? The, just to emphasize the point about saturation, in fact, if you Google this search phrase in my industry, you'll show like 26,400,000 Google search results. Now that's not to say that there's 26 million competitors, but there's no shortage of information for my buyers to be ultimately confused. And my guess is there's no shortage of information for your buyers to be really confused about what you do and how you're different. In fact, a lot of my buyers end up looking like this. They like have no idea what any of us are talking about. Like in digital marketing, we've kind of been relegated to used car sales. Like they don't understand us at all. And I'm seeing this in a lot of industries. Buyers are just confused more than ever. So let's talk about the real problems that are contributing to this, other than the saturation. Let's talk about the real problems. And then I want to talk about what you folks can do to counteract that. OK. First and foremost, I find that most digital programs, most internet marketing efforts, most website efforts, they're just way too broad and generic. We're trying to appeal to as many people as humanly possible, <clears throat> and that just doesn't work. Second, most programs are not designed with profitability in mind. You'd be surprised, like I deal with companies at all sizes and all levels, like small companies to really large multi-billion dollar corporations. And at every level, you'd be really surprised to find out that these programs that people venture into are not designed with profitability right from the get-go. And that's a huge problem because these businesses, and I imagine maybe some of you, have no way of knowing that marketing campaign that you're launching, if it's designed for profitability right from the start. See, we think profitability happens once we get that customer in front of us. We think that profitability happens once they bought and then we figure out how to control our cost of goods and control our SGNA and control all those other things. But profitability actually starts the moment you start marketing. And so this is a mindset shift that everyone needs to take when you engage in any sort of marketing effort, including your website. Another problem I see is most programs, hopefully you guys can hear me. It sounds like we're already having a lot of fun here at NAM. Want me to speak up? Speak up a little bit? How's this? Good, good. Good? Okay, so most programs are really only addressing ready now buyers, meaning our ads, our information, our content, we're looking for, looking for those people who have the wallet in hand ready to spend. But, but the majority of people that visit your website aren't ready now. In fact, if you were to look at your conversion rates on your website, if you had 5% conversion to buy, or even approaching 10%, my guess is that would be ridiculously high. Anyone agree with that? Anyone getting 10% conversion on their site? One guy out of how many? So congratulations. We should talk afterwards. So one guy out of this whole room has conversion rates approaching 10%. So what does that mean? Over 90% of your visitors are leaving and doing nothing. That means the majority of the crowd is not ready to buy, and most programs don't address these people who are not in the buying mode. Right? This is the holy grail. This is your opportunity. This is the marketplace opportunity for you to build brand and stand out. Now, what I said earlier still applies. This is not an overnight results kind of thing. You're not going to have this happen overnight. It's long term. Most, most programs have one-dimensional advertising campaigns, meaning if I were to look at the bulk of the advertising that most organizations are doing, it's very one-dimensional. It's about the product, and that's about it. There's nothing else to start to understand the different personas that you might be engaging with, the different nuances that those personas are experiencing, the different topics they care about. So most advertising is one-dimensional. Most programs also lack a nurturing strategy. So what I said a moment ago, most people aren't ready to buy right now. So once you capture them, what are you doing to nurture them? Most people aren't doing this. Most people aren't existing in their lives to provide value on an ongoing basis so that when, when they are ready to buy, your brand is top of mind. Uh, SEO efforts. If anyone's engaging in SEO, if you've ever hired an SEO firm, more times than not, you'll realize that the idea of like turning SEO into conversion, turning SEO into actual people who buy is usually an afterthought. Most people approaching SEO just want to increase traffic, and that's pretty much all they care about. Right? If you ever hired an SEO firm, you get these really long in-depth reports about how your keyword rankings are growing, but you're scratching your head wondering why your pocketbook's not growing. Right? And so most SEO efforts are completely ignoring the path to conversion. And finally, most social, social media efforts 
are a complete afterthought. In fact, social media today is still a major mystery to most businesses. They, most businesses are not tying in social media into that buying path and that buying journey. So it just becomes this shotgun kind of activity and you it's often relegated to like some, some person who's like, oh, they're good at social media and you kind of just relegate it to them, right? So these are the big problems that I'm noticing when it comes to internet marketing, digital marketing, and how we can start to turn more website visitors into uh, opportunities and customers. So let's talk about how we fix that. So now I want to talk about the antithesis of those seven issues. I'm going to give you some suggestions on what you can actually do about those seven things. Everyone hear me okay now? Good? Okay. So how can we fix this? So the first thing I want you to, guys to do is I want you to start applying what I call hyper-specificity to your program. I want you to get really specific. I realize that you might have seven, eight, ten different audiences that you want to serve, but in 2020, what I want you to do is I want you to pick one. I want you to pick one audience, one really specific audience that you're going to serve really well. You're going to put your arms around them. You're going to hug them. You're going to love them. You're going to give them all the value that you can. But pick one. I want you to start with one. And when you pick that one, what I want you to do is I want you to obsess about the one topic, the one pain point, the one thing that you're going to help them do in their lives, okay? What's the one thing that they are struggling with or that they want to learn or they want to acquire or what they desire? One thing, and how can you show up in their lives and help them with that one thing? So 2020, I don't want it to be about 18 different goals. This year, I want you to have very few goals. In fact, we just got done doing our uh, 2020 strategy. And for the first time ever, we boiled our business down to three goals. That's it. All I want to accomplish this year is three simple things. And I want you guys to do the same thing when it comes to your marketing. I want you to narrow your audiences down. And I want you to find out how you can go really deep with those audiences. One person with one pain point or one desire. What I want you to do once you have that is I want you to create experiences where all the assets and activities that you develop exist to solve that one problem for that one person or exists to fulfill that one desire for that one person and put everything around that. I want you to ask yourselves, hey, when we're doing social media, does it exist to like bring value to that one person on that one pain point? Does it exist to bring the next step in their progression towards that desire they want? I want you to obsess about that. One person, one pain point or desire and I want you to make sure every activity aligns around that. And all your assets you create, by the way, your content, whatever downloads you might have, whatever offers you might create, centered on that one person. I'm not going to go into this. Again, I might skip a couple of slides for the sake of time. Okay, so once you have one working, then you can create multiple. But again, I want to just emphasize the point. I don't want you to try to target multiple audiences here until you go deep and start killing it with one. Like I want, you to, I want you guys to high five and know that you've absolutely killed it with one audience and you're creating this following and they're converting like mad and they're engaging with you and they're asking you questions and know that you've got that on lock, right? Before you even think about going to the next one. But once you do, then it's okay to go to the next one because I want each experience you create to be specific to that one person. No longer just have a general marketing program that addresses five people. I want you to have five experiences. Does that make sense? Get really specific this year. This is the year to do it because remember, your competition is not going to decrease in 2020. We have some pretty decent economic pr prosperity in our country right now. That means the estimated 400,000 businesses that will start is an old dated number. That's probably going to increase. More and more people are being getting motivated to start those enterprises. That's your competition, that's my competition. So the only way to stand out is if we get really specific. Second thing I want you to do to counteract a lot of these problems is I want you to calculate what I call your business math. We're not gonna go into this deep calculation today, but I'm gonna give you the essence of what I mean by your business math. I want you to understand what your acceptable cost of customer acquisition is. If you have a lifetime value on your product of $10,000, I want you to know beyond the shadow of a doubt that you can spend $752 to acquire that customer and it'll be profitable for you. And I want you to have that number in your business. And I want everybody who's running the business at the executive level, and I want everybody who's in marketing to know that number. If you don't know that number, the danger you run into is hiring a marketing agency, 
hiring a marketing director and telling them to go market for you. And they're going to be marching towards all this fun, cool, fun marketing and not even know if it's going to turn into positive ROI for you. So this year, what I want you to understand is, based on lifetime value of your customer, what can you afford to spend and make that a profitable situation? Now, there's a saying out there that goes, the person that can afford to spend the most to acquire a customer is the one who wins. And by the way, this is the Amazon strategy. This is what Bezos does, right? Bezos isn't looking how to drive his cost of acquisition down. Bezos is thinking, what's the most I can spend to acquire a customer? And so when we talk about having a growth-driven mindset, this is what it is. I want you guys to start thinking about how can you push the envelope on your cost of customer acquisition, and how can you look to spend as much as you possibly can, okay? Because when you take the least mentality, you shortchange your efforts with that audience, okay? Use that, use that margin to go win in the marketplace. <clears throat> Again, we're not going to run through how to do basic business math today, but if any of you want this deck, just send me an email. I have my email up at the end because we have some instructions here on how you can go about calculating cost of a customer acquisition and what I call basic business math. So we're going to blow through this, guys, just for the sake of time. And I'll leave it up there if you want to take a picture. Okay. Again, I'll email this to you if you want it. Just shoot me an email. Okay. The next thing I want you guys to do is I want you to start infusing relationship psychology into your buying funnel, into your marketing funnel. I want you to start infusing relationship psychology and try and, and do your best to understand where people are at in their buying journey. Right? It's not a binary situation. It's not they're ready to buy, they're not ready to buy. There's a whole progression to that journey. And so what I want you to understand is in that progression of that journey, where are they at in the relationship with your brand? I want you to start thinking, like, these are not just clicks and ticks and conversions in your database. These are real human beings. And so what relationship level do they have with your brand? So I'm going to go through a, a relationship stacking order that, that I go through with my clients, and hopefully that will help you in, in understanding how you're going to develop your funnel and your relationship progression with your brand. At the very bottom, we have... By the way, I look at funnels as bottom up because I look at elevating relationships, not like dropping anonymous people into a funnel where all of a sudden there's money and magic at the bottom. I look at it from bottom up. I'm elevating relationships. So as we elevate relationships, for me, the very bottom is where they're kind of just a visitor to your site, right? They're just like that person who is just now getting to know your brand. And at the bottom, this is where you want to showcase cornerstone content. Cornerstone content is where you show your differentiated way of thinking based on that one person and that one pain point you're solving, right? How do you educate them in a way that showcases your differentiated approach as a brand? There's something unique about your brand. There's something you have of value to teach and to share with the world. What is that differentiated way of thinking? We call that cornerstone content, and the essence of it is to educate, right? So I want you to make sure when you address this one person with this one pain point, you're coming at it with a mindset of educator, not promoter, okay? So now we've got a visitor there, and you want them to take the next step with your brand. The next thing you'd want to do is you want to empower them, okay? So now you're educating them. You're showcasing di differentiated thinking about this pain point or desire. The next thing I want you to do is empower them. And the way you empower them is you give them some sort of resource or tool that allows them to take action on their own, right? Using uh, the music business example, this might be some sort of chord progression sheet. Like, show them how they can, like, play this particular piece on their own. You can empower them to take action, right? If you're helping them set up a studio, it might be a studio checklist, right? Something where they can, like, now start taking action on their own. So now you, you don't want to put out, like, e-books at this stage. Like, e-books have largely been popular for, like, lead generation and engaging people. Those are good, and I'll show you where to put those in. But at this stage, you want people to be able to take physical action towards their desire. And if you can be a role in that, that's where your brand's going to start to build up a lot of preference. Once you do that, the next thing I want you to do is I want you to engage them with deep dive content. And the key word here is to inspire them. What you need to be doing a ton of with your content is you need to be showing stories, inspirational stories of how people like them are achieving that desire, how people like them are dominating that pain point and making it go away. 
you can never have enough inspiration. And I think this is the thing where I think most brands completely miss the mark. They put out a case study or a, a story about somebody, but it's really light, it's really generic, it's really like halfway thought through. But if you emphasize your content this year and really go all in on inspiring stories, because remember, people need to see themselves in your brand, in your product, doing the thing that you do. They need to see themselves. Going back to the marketplace saturation, this means you need to have an overwhelming amount of inspirational proof. Because why? Today, we are more skeptical than ever, right? We're just bombarded with messages constantly. So if you can provide an overwhelming amount of inspiring proof, you will convince them and get them to take action. But if you just have one or two kind of halfway done stories, they're gonna still remain in that skeptical state. Remember, this is a progression of a relationship here. So here's where you need to inspire people. After you inspire them, now you're ready to receive an offer. Remember, if they're not a ready now buyer, at this point, now they would be ready. So that way, what you can say is, after showing them the inspiration, all you have to say is, would you like that too? You've seen this amazing story of success. You've seen this amazing story of achieving this desire. Would you like that too? Now your offer to engage your brand, your offer to come in and try that particular piece of product, your offer to get on the phone and do a consultation, whatever that first sales conversation is for your brand, now you can tee that up in a very non-salesy way, in a very logical way, because you've given them the inspiration, and now all you have to say is, would you like that too, okay? And so what I love about this is we don't have to architect heavy-handed sales tactics. We don't have to come up with these whiz-bang crazy, like, buy it now, expires at midnight kind of offers. All we have to do is just inspire them with proof and show them how people just like them are achieving that desire or solving that problem. And the rest of it is kind of your core business, right? You sell them the thing that you sell them. And then it doesn't stop there. Hopefully after you sell them the thing that you sell them, you take it one level further and you delight them so you can turn them into fans. And this is a, a critical area that I think a lot of businesses are missing, which is we sell people something and then we go looking for new customers. Where's my new customer? Where's my new customer? Meanwhile, your existing customers are right here. And if you just hug them and love them, and figure out how to turn them into fans, they might bring you more customers than you could ever imagine, okay? So this year, Pareto, what was your name? Anshi. Anshi just said it's like Pareto's principle, right? 80-20, right? You spend 80% of your time with 20% of the people that are gonna bring you the bulk of your value, right? So that's exactly it. Once you have your customers, you spend all this time and effort to like get really specific and bring them tons of value, show them that you love them, you hug them, you kissed them, you cared for them. Like, don't forget them. Turn them into fans. By the way, this is in um, this deck, and not only uh, there's a blueprint document that I'll give you guys here in a moment. We're going close to time here. Uh, when you guys do, you guys, anyone doing retargeting, advertising retargeting? Okay, a couple of people. So the first thing you guys have to do is start employing retargeting advertising. What that means is if they visit your website, then anywhere they go on the internet, they can see your ads. It's really cheap, really easy to do, but I want you to, what I want you to do though is whoever you have do this, make sure that the, the retargeting is dynamic, meaning you don't just show them the same stinking ad every time they're on the internet. What I want you to do is have that ad change based on what they consumed and where they're at in the relationship with your brand, right? Because what are we saying to people when they visit your website and all they see is that same ad to buy, 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 buy? We're saying to them, we don't understand where you're at, we don't care, we just want you to buy something, okay? If they wanted to buy something, they would buy something, right? So depending on where they're at in their relationship with your brand, change your advertising such that it will dynamically adjust. I want you to nurture people. So that means when you get people into your database and we know they're not ready to buy that moment, I want you to make sure you stay in touch with them every seven to 14 days. I want you to stay on topic. So the, the thing that initially engaged them, the thing that the, the initial problem you were solving, within that topic, I want you to make sure your communications are about that topic. Like you can brag about yourself and talk about new product and stuff like that every now and then, because you gotta get them to buy at some point, but mostly I want you to continue to bring value to their lives. Stay on topic. Again, inspire through proof. We talked about that. And don't forget to leverage third-party content. There are plenty of non-competitive videos on YouTube that you could be sending people to inspire them. 
They're not your competitors, right? So don't feel like you gotta create all this content yourself. Follow up with them, inspire them. Inspire them, inspire, inspire. And then lastly, uh, when you're doing SEO, what I want you to do is use SEO as what I call feeder content, meaning what I want you to do is just simply answer the questions that they have and use that as feeder to get into your experience that you're creating. SEO doesn't have to be complicated. What I want you guys to really focus on this year is just answer the questions they have. Like get in a room and write down the 50, 100 questions you, you believe that your customers are asking and that you've heard them ask and just develop content to answer each individual question. Just answer the questions. And when you do so, if you link it up to the experience you've created, now you've got a feeder system into that experience. Does that make sense? And then lastly, I want you guys to get your entire company involved. Like, engaging your target audiences isn't just a marketing department thing. Everyone in the company should be answering these questions. Everyone in the company should be obsessing about how to provide value to your buyer personas. Get everyone involved. Lastly, what I want to do is share the uh, blueprint tool with you guys where all of this stuff is housed. And uh, it'll have everything all put together and you can download it here. And on that note, wait till y'all done taking photos. And if you have any other questions, don't hesitate to shoot me an email. Be happy to engage with you folks. Hit me up on the, uh, the Instagrams and whatnot, at, at Frank Cowell. And I'll be around if you guys have questions. Thanks for having me, guys.